Stella, do you like the new scratcher? Hey, be nice. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It is 9 a.m. and here's Ditto and Hydrox and they had some food this morning and Boo is visiting with them. He's hanging out by the back door with them. I think Boo wants to be friends with Ditto or vice versa. And today is supposed to be a rainy overcast day so we'll see what happens. Sometimes the weather changes as the day goes on. How you doing Boo? And there's Ditto. So the inside cats are having a modified meal plan right now. I've been splitting up their meals. I've done it a few times in the past where instead of getting their breakfast all at once, I split it into two meals. So they get half of their breakfast and then a few hours later they get the other half of their breakfast. And then the same thing with their dinner. So Boo is now licking his plate clean, or at least it looks like that's what he's doing. Um, they had breakfast a little while ago, the first half, and then probably around noon they'll have the second half of their breakfast. And in the past I did this when the cats were vomiting from eating too fast. But I came across an article yesterday saying that um, cats in the wild eat more smaller meals versus like one or two large meals a day. Um, it said something like cats in the wild can, some of them could eat like 12 meals a day, but they're all like really small meals. So for example, if Simba was living outside, he's not going to be catching birds and mice, you know, twice a day. Chances are that he's not going to be doing that. He might catch a bird or a mouse maybe once a day, maybe every other day, maybe every three days, but he's going to be supplementing that with like a lot of insects. Um, we fail to realize how many insects cats eat when they're living outside in the wild. It's not all birds and rodents. And the insect consumption leads to smaller meals. And look at that, Boo finished all his food. I also think it's interesting to see how their behavior changes when I modify their meal plans. So when they get two meals a day, they eat their breakfast and then they take a long nap all day. And then at night they eat their dinner Sometimes they take a nap after dinner. Lately, they have not been taking a nap after dinner. So they'll eat their dinner and then they'll hang out and get some playtime and then they'll have some crunchies. Then they'll hang out and then they'll go to bed. So I'm wondering if they're going to sleep less by eating uh, less at each meal. So we'll see what happens. Stella's not too happy about it. It's 9.55 a.m. I'm sitting here waiting for a conference call to start and Simba's been laying in both cat towers at the same time so his body is in this cat tower but he was using the one next to him as a pillow his head was in the other cat tower this is Boo's arch I don't know how old it is but it's kind of falling apart already it's coming off of the base and it's time for Boo to have a new one. And this is Boo's new arch. I found this downstairs. I was uh, going through some stuff in, I have like a back storage room downstairs and um, I was uh, going through some stuff and I found this down there. Um, and I bought this at the Christmas tree shops. It was $9.99 at the time. Here's Simba and Stella and Splash. They're all waiting for crunchies. Um, but um, what I do is when I see good deals on cat stuff, um, I buy it and then I put it away for, for later, like when I'll need it. So uh, it's time for Boo to get a new arch. And it says durable bristles, catnip compartment, and it says it has a hanging toy, uh, carpet scratching pad, Multi-use cats groom, scratch, and play. Hopefully this one's good quality. Um, we'll see how it compares. So here's the old one. Uh, you can see that the carpet is coming up like around the edges and then this 
doesn't stay in and um, yeah it's been well loved by Boo. Boo you want a new art? You want a new one? Boo says he likes this one. I have three cats watching me open this arch box. I wish you could have seen Stella's face. Yeah, this is how she's been watching me. Oh, now she doesn't want she doesn't want you to see. So here's the new one. This is what the base looks like, and there's the old base. They're pretty much exactly the same size. Um, here's the difference. So this arch uh, is thinner. Okay, we're back. We were just uh, interrupted by some noisy raccoons outside. So um, this is the new arch and here's the old arch. So you can see that the new arch is quite a bit thinner uh, than the old one, but it looks like Boo is interested in the toy. So let's put this together and see how he likes it. Okay, so here are the arches. Here is the new one and here is the old one. What's Boo going to do? Boo, you have a new arch. We're going to get rid of the old one, okay? Okay, Boo? You got a new one. You like your new one? You want me to put it near the scratch and rolls? Okay. This is how Boo likes his arch. He likes it in between the scratch and rolls. See? He likes to sit in the scratch and rolls under his arch. Looks like he likes the toy also. You like it, Boo? Boo, do you like your new arch? Do you like your new arch, Boo? It's about 10 p.m. right now, so I'm sorry if this video has not been very bright. It's kind of dark in this room right now. It's 7.54 a.m. And here's Stella and Simba on their bed. I'm just about to give them breakfast. Grandma and Grandpa are coming today. So I gotta make sure all the cats are fed before they get here. Just in case any of them freak out. Splash is probably gonna hide. Here's Boo. He's sitting by his arch. And there are chipmunk videos on. Actually, it said chipmunk videos, but right now it's a black squirrel. He usually likes black squirrels. And here's Splash. Splash has not even gotten out of bed yet. Look what Splash and Simba got for their birthday. Look at this. It's a scratchy ramp. But it's not really because Grandpa Farrell built it for them. That was Boo. Boo just walked past it. But it's a scratching ramp so the cats could go on it and they could scratch it. And it's adjustable so it can be different heights. And it can also be used as a ramp if they need to walk up onto a chair or a piece of furniture. Isn't that cool? Do you think the cats are going to use it? Right now, Simba's hiding under the bed. Splash is hiding downstairs. Boo's following Grandma Farrell around the house. And I don't know where Stella is. I just put some catnip on it. Hopefully that'll attract the cats. What'd you get, Simba? What'd you get? You think you're going to like it? Scratch on it. Scratch on it, Simba. Scratch on it, Simba. Happy fifth birthday. You're five soon. Hey, Simba. Hey, Boo. Have your treats. Look at this. Simba found the scratcher. Simba's laying on it. Simba, that's not a bed. It's a scratcher. Okay. You can use it as a bed. Come on, everybody. Come on, Stella. You have to do one at a time. Give me a chance over here, please. Oh no, it went on Stella's fur.
All right, wait, wait, wait. Stella says, where's hers? Come on, Stella. Stella, go get yours. Come on, Stella, here. Stella. You don't want it right Yeah, now. she does. She got very upset that you took it away from her. Where's Booze? He's watching the TV. No, he's it? not. He's waiting for his. Now, Stella's upset. Where's Stella? I thought you had a system. I did. I did. Bye bye. Simba's eating Stella's. All right, wait, Simba. And I'm probably my shoe. Stella found it. What I dropped on her fur. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Stella. Well, they'd be very gentle about it. They'd be very patient. Yes, Stella. Oh no, it's on my pants now. <laughs> this is enough. It's on the rug now. <laughs> You're sloppy. I know. Look, so I gotta look. It's all over my pants. The what? All right, that's it. Where's Stella? She didn't finish hers at all. She barely got any. Yes, yeah, Simba. Yes, yeah, Simba. Stella. Here's yours. Here's yours. Here's yours. All right. You want the last? Here, Simba. Over here. That's it. They won't get it now. Equal. Equal amount. Now they'll be happy. It's 9.54 a.m. We're all sleeping in today. And look where Simba's been sleeping. Stella, do you like the new scratcher? Hey, be nice. So it looks like the rug has slid a bit. See how there's a space here? The rug should actually go in there, like that. I think it's, maybe someone was scratching on it, just maybe because of the way that they're laying on it. I don't know. Do you like it, boo? Are you going to scratch? I haven't seen anyone scratch on it yet. I've seen them lay on it and sleep on it, but not scratch on it. And they do like flat scratchers, so I would think that they would. I think they're probably afraid of ruining it because it's new. You gonna scratch it, Stella? Scratch it. You gonna scratch it? <laughs> no. You just wanna lay on it also? Okay, maybe after they get tired of laying on it, then they'll start scratching it. Uh, later on, I wanna put it back up, like as a ramp. But right now, they just seem to be really happy with it flat. Scratch the scratcher. Scratch it. Scratch it. She's getting her nails ready. She says, let me do my nails first. 
Come on, Stella. You could scratch it. Scratch it. You don't want to scratch it? You don't want to scratch it, Stella? It's 2.54 p.m. I just walked into the room and saw this. This is Simba. And this is how he's sleeping. These are two cat towers next to each other. So one cat tower is not enough for him. He needs two. I guess he wants to stretch out. How is that comfortable? Hey Simba, are you comfortable? You're comfortable like that? Simba says yes, he's very comfortable. It's 6.36 p.m. Look who discovered the scratchy ramp or the rampy scratcher. It's Splash. I don't know if he's been scratching on it, but he likes laying on it. So far, all the cats really like laying on it. I have to catch one of them scratching on it. They might be afraid to scratch on it because they might not want to ruin it. But it's made for scratching. Splash, scratch on it. Scratch on it, Splashy. It's about 7.30 a.m. I just walked past the room and saw this. Stella was actually scratching on the ramp. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Now last night while I was sleeping, I heard noise and I wasn't sure what it was. And I thought it might have been Splash and Simba scratching on this, but I don't know. Like I was so tired that I had really did not know what I was hearing. And um, I was too tired to wake up. It was like, you know, when you're half asleep, half awake. So looks like the cats are enjoying this already. Look at what's going on here. These two were up very late last night. I don't know what they were doing in the middle of the night. They were making a lot of noise. Good morning, Simba. Good morning, Splash. Good morning. You stay there. You stay there, you're not eating yet. It's 9.45 a.m. and there's Splash and he just used this scratchy ramp. Good job, Splash. I heard the noise and I was like, that sounds like maybe it's the ramp and it was the ramp. I think it's the noise I heard in the middle of the night too. So Splash has been using it. Yay.
It's about 2 p.m. right now, and I just gave the cats a little snack. This is a trial size bag of natural balance chicken and brown rice formula. This is actually dry dog food, and I got this as a sample at a local pet store uh, that occasionally gives out samples by the register. And I picked it up and I looked at it and I realized, you know, wait a minute, these are the same ingredients that you find in cat treats. And, um, you know, I'm talking like a typical supermarket variety cat treats, um, something even like uh, Temptations. Actually, this has better ingredients uh, than some of the uh, typical supermarket variety cat treats. Uh, it's chicken, chicken meal, brown rice, brewer's rice, rice bran, chicken fat, uh, dried tomato pumice, brewer's, brewer's dried yeast, natural flavor, flaxseed, salt, taurine, Manhattan fish oil, and then it goes into all kinds of vitamin and mineral supplements. So the only thing that's different um, with these is it has some brown rice, brewer's rice, rice bran, um, and it has some um, grain ingredients in it, but so do a lot of the dry cat foods. If we look at the really cheap dry cat foods, they're full of uh, corn, wheat, and soy. So these are actually uh, better uh, ingredients than the typical really cheap dried cat foods. So when I got these, I said, let me give some to the cats and see if they like it. The cats love these, absolutely love them. And what I think is really cute with these, so these are a bit bigger than typical uh, cat food, than like typical crunchies. Boo! Wait until I'm done, you just bit my finger. It's a good thing he doesn't have all his teeth because that really kind of hurt. Um, so these are actually like the size of little cookies for cats. Um, they're, they're bigger than crunchies, they, they almost look like little vanilla wafers for cats, but as you can see, the cats really like them. Right now, I'm gonna give two each to each of the cats just so you can see that the cats like them. The cats already had a few. So I just wanted to mention this and point this out. While it's not smart to feed cats dog food uh, or dog treats or anything like that, uh, always look at the ingredients because there is some a small percentage of dog food or dog treats that have the same exact ingredients that they put in cat food or cat treats and um, cats love them and they're just as healthy in many ways. Again, this is not something that I'm going to feed the cats all day every day. This is an occasional treat for them. There you go, boo. That was fast, boo. There you go, Stella. I don't think the cats even chew these. I think she swallowed the whole thing. Okay, now she's chewing it. There you go, Simba. Simba wants to be farther away from Boo. Well, he likes him too. These are splashes. He's being very camera shy right now.
I just raised the height on this scratcher. It was in the second um, little segment here and I just made it into and I just moved it over to the third one so it's a little bit higher. It's quite a bit higher actually. Let's see if let's see if I get get Stella back onto it.
I think it's about 8.30 a.m. right now, and this is what's going on right now. So, Stella bit Simba on the butt, and I don't know if you just heard him meow from it, but Boo did not like that. So, Boo went to take revenge on Stella for doing that to Simba. So, I think Boo and Simba are becoming buddies. And Simba's taking refuge by the scratch and rolls in the arch where Boo was just hanging out. You okay, Boo? You okay, Boo? I'm here with Stella, Boo, and Simba, and today is fish day for the cats, and they are going to be trying the Sim- Stella has decided she needs to scratch on their scratching ramp. Here's Simba, here's Boo. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. So I was saying I'm here with the cats and today for dinner they are going to try this cat food that was sent to them from Bad Billy. This is Simply Perfection, super premium cat food, grain free. Uh, this is a box that has six salmon entrees and six tuna entrees. It says flaked in sauce, no grains or fillers, no artificial flavors, artificial colors or preservatives, natural with added vitamins, minerals and other nutrients. On the side of the box, it says, Our Promise to You. At Simply Perfection, we celebrate the perfect bond you share with your pet. For us, perfection is the love and loyalty between pets and the people who love them. Everything we do, from the premium ingredients we select to the finished recipes you bring home, starts with a simple promise. Create safe, nutritious, and delicious recipes to nurture and nourish special moments together. And then it says, Natural with added vitamins minerals and other nutrients, no grains or fillers, no artificial flavors, artificial colors or preservatives. And then here in the back they give us the guaranteed analysis and they give us the ingredients. They are salmon broth, salmon, chicken, chicken liver, dried egg white, potato starch, spinach, broccoli, carrots, natural flavor, dried egg product, salt, sodium phosphate, potassium chloride, cranberries, guar gum, minerals, and vitamins. So there's some high quality protein in there. And there's also a good amount of vegetable matter. And this food says it's made in Canada. And then here's the tuna entree. And the ingredients are fish broth, tuna, chicken, poultry giblets, dried egg whites, potato starch, spinach, dried egg product, broccoli, carrots, natural flavor, sodium phosphate, salt, potassium chloride, calcium carbonate, and then it goes into minerals. And then this one has some carrageenan, guar gum, cranberries, and vitamins. And the salmon entree also has some carrageenan listed also. I didn't see it the first time, but it's way down on the list, so it shouldn't be too concerning. So once a week, uh, the cats have fish in a can, uh, usually on Fridays. And this is what, and this is what they're having today. They're gonna try the salmon and the tuna. You ready to try some fish, Simba?
This is what the food looks like. The cats are getting half a can of each. So on the left is the salmon and on the right is the tuna. Okay, here are their plates. They're each getting some of the tuna and some of the salmon and Boo's going straight for the tuna. Stella is going for the tuna also. There you go Simba, it's fish, you like fish. Here's Splash. There you go Splash, it's fish. Now Splash has a thing where anytime he is confronted with new food, he usually doesn't eat it. He will usually run away from it, so we'll see what happens if he eats it or not. Here's Stella and Boo, they're both enjoying their dinner, they're both eating the tuna. Simba's eating the tuna. And it looks like Splash is eating the salmon. Splash has moved over and he, now he's eating the tuna. Now he's going back to the salmon. Good boy, Splash. I'm happy you're eating the food. You must really like it. Either that or he's really hungry. This is Simba's plate, so it looks like he ate some of the tuna, and he licked the juice off some of the tuna, and he left the salmon. Simba, you don't want to finish? Finish your food. Finish your food, Simba. Finish your food, Simba. You want some dried fish on it? Okay, so I gave Simba some um, dried minnows on his food, and I just gave him a few crunchies to entice him to eat. I also just put a few crunchies on Stella's plate and Boo's plate. Uh, Stella pretty much left half the tuna and the majority of the salmon. It looks like Boo ate most of the tuna and left most of the salmon. And this is Splash's plate, and it looks like he ate about two-thirds of the tuna, one-third of the salmon, then he walked away from his plate. So we'll come back in a little while and we'll see how much the cats ate and how much they left on their plates. Here's Hijax and Ditto. They're waiting to taste some of the new food. But I'm going to wait for the inside cats to finish. Whatever the inside cats don't finish, I'm going to give to Hydrox and Ditto. I'll probably also open up another can or two for them. But they're just going to have to wait a few minutes. It's now about 20 minutes later. The cats have all walked away from their food. So let's see what's going on here. This is Simba's plate. It looks like most of the tuna has been eaten. All the juice from the tuna has been eaten. And there's some salmon left. Here's Boo's plate on the right and Stella's plate on the left. And it looks very similar. They left the salmon. They ate all of the tuna. And here's Splash's plate. Some of the salmon has been eaten, but most of the tuna has been eaten. But again, it looks like the cats really enjoyed the tuna, not so much the salmon. What do you say about that, Stella? You have anything to say about that? She says that the tuna was really good. She ate as much as she wanted from everyone's plate. Okay, good job, Stella. Okay, I just gave all the leftovers to Hydrox and Ditto. Is Ditto gonna eat it? He's walking over to it. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna eat it. Now what they're getting is mostly salmon right now. I'll probably open a can of the tuna and put some of that on their plate, but we'll see what they do with this. It's a few minutes later and Ditto is really enjoying this food. He's been going back and forth between both of the plates. See? Yeah. So, we'll check back in a few minutes. I just put a can of the tuna on the plates. I put half a can on each plate and 
Now Hydrox wants to eat and Ditto wants to eat. There's another plate with half a can on it, so they don't have to share. There's plenty of food on both plates. So if they eat that, I'll give them another can of the tuna. I just put out another can of the tuna cat food. And both Hydrax and Ditto are eating it now. What are you doing, Boo? See? See? Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's 6.30 p.m. I just heard what sounded like a police car outside, you know when they get on like their loudspeaker? But I didn't know where it was coming from, so I came in the room to look out the window. I don't see anything outside, but I saw this. It's Simba, he's poking his head out of the penthouse. Hey Simba, did you hear it also? What did you think it was? Simba says he doesn't know, but it sounded strange. Simba loves that penthouse. He says it's so nice and comfy up there. No one usually bothers him when he's up there. Right, Simba? Hello, Simba. You're a handsome boy. It is 8.10 p.m. And I just fed the cats about five or 10 minutes ago. That's Boo's plate right there. He likes to finish his food up here. I think Stella ended up eating some of it. And the flickering light is a TV because I just put on some chipmunk videos for the cats because I was just about to walk out the door and run some errands before the stores close. Around here, the stores close around 9.30. And right now it's 8.10, so I was just going to head out and get some errands done. And then I heard that noise, that pumping noise. And I said, oh no, someone's throwing up. And it was Boo, and he was in his room. And as you can see, he puked on the floor, which I was really happy about. And then he puked on this rug. And he's puked on this rug before, and at least the nice thing about this rug is that uh, there's no backing on it or anything. Um, it's like a woven rug, and I can throw this in the washing machine. So even though it's not fun to clean this up, um, at least it's you know something I could uh, clean up easier than a rug that I can't throw in the washing machine. It is 10.07 a.m. and there's Hydrox. He is eating his third can of food this morning. Ditto has shared some of it. He's eating the Performatrin wet cat food that I got at Pet Value when they were going out of business. Um, I got these cans for like 90% off, so I stocked up. Yesterday, the temperature dropped a lot, so we were having beautiful springtime weather, and now it feels like winter again and it was supposed to get down to about 33 degrees and i think right now it's in the low 40s it's also super windy out so i had to put this plate under this very heavy chair to hold it in place because the other plates that i put out before i realized it was windy they blew away um so i have to find them later and uh, throw them out but uh, hydrox has had a lot of food today and I also just wanted to point out that feral cats don't eat on the same kind of regular schedule uh, that indoor cats do. Sometimes they do if you give a feral cat uh, meals at certain times. Sometimes they will eat those meals. Other times when the weather is bad or iffy, they'll skip some meals and then they'll make up for it with one huge meal. And that's what's going on now. So Hydrax really didn't eat much dinner yesterday. I don't think they ate any dinner. Um, and now he's eating today. 
because the weather is at least a little bit better for him to come out of his shelter. But when the weather gets bad, they like to just hunker down somewhere, get cozy, and, um, you know, just kind of uh, wait out the storm. And I'm sorry for the reflections, but I'm shooting this through the glass. So anyway, that's Hydrox. He's looking good and he's been eating very well. And I saw Ditto this morning. Ditto's looking good and Ditto ate some food. I don't know where he's been staying. Ditto likes to roam the neighborhood. Um, but I know a lot of people ask about Hydrox and Ditto. So I just want to make sure I show them to you and let you know that they're both doing well and they're both very much looking forward to warm weather on a regular basis. Hopefully this is the last cold snap that we get and I'm ready to put all my plants out. My greenhouse is full of plants and um, this year I bought a fig tree, a little one, and I still have my Meyer lemon tree from last year is in there. Um, my berries are all growing from last year. I thought a lot of them were dead, but they came back. So we'll see how they do this year. Um, and then I got all kinds of seedlings. I got tons of tomato seedlings happening and I planted some uh, peppers and some zucchini and some squash and we'll see how those come up. I just planted them the other day. Um, but so far everything else is doing well and I can't wait to start moving everything out of the greenhouse and into the yard. It's 7.45 a.m. and Splash and Simba are still asleep in the round cat beds by the window. Good morning, Stella. How are you today? Stella's watching birds outside. Good morning, Boo. Boo slept on the bed all night, but now he's over here. Hello, Boo. This is Boo's favorite place to hang out. He loves hanging out in his scratch and roll by the arch. He also likes watching TV from there. And here's Simba. Simba's looking for his pom-pom. It's about 10 a.m. right now and I thought I would show you Boo's new bribe food. This is Stella and Chewy's freeze-dried raw food. Chick, chick, chicken, dinner, morsels. Um, and this is basically just freeze-dried raw bites. That's what they look like. We're near the end of the bag right now. We're near the bottom. Um, so that's what's left of Boo's breakfast. And he kind of has a routine where I give all the cats their food downstairs. All the cats, um, eat their food downstairs pretty much, uh, except for Boo. He eats part of his food downstairs. And then the minute I come upstairs to continue to get things done to start my morning, Boo has to come upstairs also. And he has to finish the rest of his food right here on this play rug in the living room. And I have to put one of these chick chick chicken bites on his food. And what I have to do is, this is what they look like. So I actually just crush this up. I have to crush it up and sprinkle it over his food like it's grated cheese. So this is some of the food that I bought at Pet Value when they were going out of business a few months ago. I stocked up on uh, quite a bit of freeze-dried raw food that they had. I also stocked up on canned food, dry food, and cat litter. Everything was 90% off at the time. Some of it was 95% off. How could I not? But what I had to do then was I had to write the expiration date on everything when I got home so I could use everything in the order in which it expires so nothing goes bad. So that's why it says 521 because these will be uh, expiring next month according to the date on the packaging. Now, I think everyone pretty much knows that the date on the packaging um, is just like a lot of times it's a sell by date and most of the time food is good way past the expiration date so it's not something I'm terribly worried about. If we take a look at the back of this and we look at the ingredients they are chicken which is ground with bone, chicken liver, chicken gizzard, pumpkin seed, uh, then we go to potassium chloride, sodium phosphate, choline chloride, fenugreek seed, then we have dried probiotics and vitamins and minerals. So this is a really simple recipe actually. So it's chicken ground with bone, chicken liver, chicken gizzard, pumpkin seeds, and some fenugreek seed, and 
vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. So that's pretty easy. There's Stella. She's moved in on the plate. She's starting to lick it clean already. The cats have been on a new feeding schedule, so they get breakfast, which is a reduced proportion. And then they get a little snack in the afternoon, probably around 2 p.m. I've given them some cat treats. And then they get an early dinner. I've been trying to feed them anytime around five or six. And again, it's a reduced proportion. And then at night they get some crunchies. So a week or two ago, I was doing a split breakfast. They got part of their breakfast early in the morning. And then a few hours later, they got the second part of their breakfast. And I was doing the same thing with their dinner. I was splitting their dinner into two separate portions. And they were not getting an afternoon snack. They were just getting kind of like four small meals and then a little bit of crunchies at night. Uh, but I decided to change that. So now they're getting like a medium sized breakfast and they're getting a little bit of treats in the afternoon. They're getting a medium sized dinner and then they are getting uh, some crunchies at night. And it's been working really well so far. Um, so we'll see how it goes moving forward. I found that the cats really enjoy their afternoon snack. It's 1.45 p.m. I wanted to show you Boo because he looks so cute sitting here with his paws on the window. He's just been hanging out here looking out the window, but of course the minute he sees me with the camera, he wants to uh, you know, run toward me and get pets. What are you doing, Boo? See? See? See, that's what he wants. He wants me to sit here and give him pets. You want pets, Boo? Boo wants pets. It's 1.48 p.m. and this is some of the homemade raw food that I made for the cats yesterday. I have one, two, three, four, five, five pans of it uh, in my freezers. I have a small freezer downstairs with three pans and then the freezer above my refrigerator has two pans and there's still a little left over uh, that the cats had for dinner yesterday, breakfast today, and there's still some in the fridge. Um, so uh, I made quite a bit of homemade raw food. It should last them at least three weeks. So what I do is I scoop out the raw food onto a parchment lined sheet pan and then I freeze it. And once the scoops are frozen, I then put them into gallon size Ziploc bags. One sheet pan pretty much fits perfectly into a one gallon bag. And then I keep these stored in the freezer in the one gallon bags and I take out uh, like three or four every time I feed the cats. It's 10, 10 a.m. And Hydrox is calling for ditto. I just opened the back door and Hydrox was hanging out by the back door. As soon as he saw me, he started meowing. This is a meow to tell ditto to get over here because it's time for breakfast. Right, Hydrox? Where's Ditto at? I just put a plate of food out. This is two scoops of the homemade raw food with a bunch of water mixed in, and there's Ditto. Hydrox actually went and he ran over to the fence on the side, and um, he's prancing around over there. I was like, look at Hydrox. And then Ditto showed up from under the fence. It's so funny how Hydrox does that. He's like, come on, Ditto, let's eat. They love sharing a plate together. I only put a small plate out because I didn't know if Ditto would come by. I thought maybe he was out in the woods or something. But, no, he's here. Sometimes they eat at the same time and sometimes they take turns. So we'll see if they eat what's on that plate and if they do, I'll put more out. So when Hydrax was eating the homemade raw food, Ditto came up to the back door and told me that he really enjoyed the salmon that I gave them yesterday and he wanted some more of that so I put another plate of that out and you could see they're both devouring it right now they really enjoy that that canned food this is what they're eating it's simply perfection grain-free super premium cat food salmon entree flaked in sauce they love this the inside cats don't like this one they like the tuna one but Hydrax and Ditto really enjoy the salmon Okay, they are on their second can of salmon. I put some rocks around their plates so the plates don't slide all over the place. And um, yeah, they're really hungry today. The weather is supposed to be nice for the next several days. Hopefully, um, 
this entire week should be sunny. We really need it because it's just been really cloudy and just kind of miserable. So hopefully the, um, the weather gets a little bit nicer. It's 1.05 p.m. I just got home. I was out running errands for the last few hours. And ever since I got home, Simba has been acting so weird. Like, everywhere I go, he's right on top of me. And I'm like, what are you doing, Simba? It's not time for treats. I'm like, Simba, I haven't even had any breakfast yet. I'm starving. I need to just, like, relax. And then we'll have treats in a little while. But he wouldn't leave me alone. I'm like, what do you want? Windows open? I can open some windows for you. Nope. Didn't want open windows. Did not want anything. And then Simba showed me he showed me what he wanted me to see this is what simba wanted me to see somebody vomited up their breakfast it looks like there's a hairball in it and i don't know if it was simba or boo or splash or stella um i can try to check the cameras but i don't know if the cameras are on if you ask me i think simba threw up the reason why I think Simba threw up because he seems really hungry right now. And a lot of times after cats throw up, especially when it's from a hairball and not because they're sick or anything, then they get really hungry afterward because their stomach is empty. Right, Simba? Simba, are you hungry because you threw up? Yeah, that was you, right? Okay. This is what I use to clean up vomitous messes. This is... Nature's Miracle Advanced Severe Mess Enzymatic Formula Stain and Odor Eliminator. And I'm almost near the end of this bottle and it works really well. So what you do is you wipe up the mess, clean up as much as you can, and then you spray this on anything that's left on the rug. You let it sit for a while and you let it do its job. And then you um, just kind of mop up everything that's uh, left over. I usually just use paper towels. I find that the best thing so right now I sprayed this on the rug I'm sitting here waiting for it to kind of uh, sink in here's Simba Simba was that you that was you right so in addition to using this Nature's Miracle Stain and Odor Eliminator, another thing that I do is use semi-disposable rugs. What I mean by that is, um, for example, this rug uh, that the cats puked on, this is like their play rug, so they are kind of trained to play on this rug and to lay on this rug. And I think I got this rug for like $20 or $25. Uh, it's like a 5 by 7 um, area rug. Um, it's really cheap. Um, I think you could get these at Costco. I think I got this at Christmas Tree Shop uh, Just because they're cheap you get wherever wherever you could get cheap rugs um, That's what I usually do So I have this one that the cats can kind of do whatever they want with and then I have like the small little uh, throw rugs or uh, accent rugs that I kind of change up for the season and I get those super cheap also at Christmas tree shop so if the cats vomit on those really bad I could just toss them I'm not gonna you know be upset because I spent so much money on the rugs or anything and the same thing goes for the rug and booze room um, I don't even know where I got that one. Oh, I got that one at home goods it was um, it was very reasonably priced but that one I could actually throw in the washing machine so um all right I'm gonna finish cleaning this up here's what the rug looks like after the first spray and cleanup um, I added some more on that big spot where the giant mound of vomit was and I'm gonna let that sink in and uh, do its job and then I'm gonna mop that up also this is not the most pleasant smelling stuff but it does its job and here's Simba He's decided he's going to take a bath, and I think he's really claiming this mess as his because Simba tends to kind of be proud of the messes he makes. If Simba had not made this mess, I don't think he'd be, like, hanging out here right now. I really think Simba is kind of taking claim of it. Simba, is that your vomit? Was that your vomit, Simba? Did you have a hairball? Now, I've been trying to brush these cats at least every other day, but I have to admit, over the past uh, few weeks, 
I haven't really brushed them as much as I should. I try to work it into their nighttime routine. So before they get crunchy that night, they get brushed. And Simba gets brushed more than any of the other cats because he has the longest, fluffiest fur. Stella has the thickest fur. Like her fur is the most dense, but it's not as long as Simba's. Simba has the longest fur. So in general, I think he has the greatest volume of fur. It's 1.27 p.m. and we just heard some kind of fight outside, um, some kind of animal fight outside. It sounded like maybe it could be a cat fight, maybe it could be a raccoon fight. It did sound like he was coming from the woods, so I don't know who was in the fight. Um, and I have to go check on Hydrox if he's around. I don't know if Ditto's around. They were around earlier for breakfast, but um, yeah, that's why Stella and uh, Simba are kind of on high alert right now. It's 12.25 p.m. and here's Boo and here's Ditto and they have like the same head. Like their head is shaped exactly the same and they have the same meow. So I think Ditto possibly could be one of Boo's offspring. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. I mean, we don't know what Boo was up to that nine months he was living outside without the other cats. We don't even know what he was up to when he was living outside with the other cats. So Splash and Simba were born end of April, early May. And, you know, all the cats were living outside the rest of that year. So that would be May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Boo was in and out of the woods and all around the neighborhood, so he there could be there could be quite a few mini boos roaming around. Boo Is Ditto your relative? Boo is Ditto your son? Boo says he doesn't know. He could be. He doesn't know. But they look so much alike. And they sound so much alike. It's 4.45 p.m. Look at Simba. He's so cute. He's laying on top of the sofa cushion, but he's like half hanging off of it. But he looks really happy. The curtains behind him are blue, but for some reason they're showing up purple on the screen. Look at his black arms and legs. See, he takes after Boo. It's 10.04 p.m. and I was just walking past the room where the live stream monitor is and I saw something walk past the automatic feeder so I looked out the window and I saw a raccoon and it walked up to the back steps and it was looking for food. It was basically looking all over the patio for food and then I realized I did not put any food out for the raccoons today. I was too busy to set up a live stream or um, and I wasn't home uh, when I normally put food out for them um, like around dinner time before it gets dark. So. I opened the back door and I threw some, I have uh, peanut butter cream cookies, kind of like Oreos but with vanilla cookies and peanut butter cream inside. I got them at the Dollar Tree. 
And I know the raccoons like them because I put them on the party platter a few nights. Um, so there was one raccoon uh, right where they are now. And I threw the cookies at the raccoon. Not at the raccoon, but I threw the cookies out so the raccoons could eat them. And then I saw the raccoon do what Hydrox does for Ditto. The raccoon turned and looked toward the back of the yard where I normally put the party platter and like motioned for the other raccoon to come and get something to eat. And the two of them are just eating the cookies right now. I'll probably throw some more cookies out for them. Um, I was going to throw some graham crackers, but the cookies were what I have readily available, so... They seem to be behaving themselves, and I don't know how much cat food is in the automatic feeder or anything. Hydrox is not in his shelter right now, unless he's in um, the doghouse shelter, but he's not in the shelter under the house. So There's a whole bunch more cookies there on the patio that they can eat. They hear a dog barking. Can you see this really big bird in this tree? I don't know what kind of bird that is, but I was just coming outside to get in my car and it was flying like right above me. And I don't know if it's an eagle or what, it is huge. I'm wondering if it's a hawk, cause now I think I see two of them. It's 3.53 p.m. and I want to see if I could show you something. I just walked down my driveway and saw this. Look who it is. It's Ditto. Can you see him? There's Ditto. He found a nice little cozy place to hang out today. He was actually watching me on the patio for a while. I've been doing some work outside. And then I guess he got tired and came over here. There he is. He looks very comfortable, doesn't he? Hello, Ditto. And look who else I found. Someone's hanging out under the car near Ditto. It's Hydrox. How you doing, Hydrox? Hydrox says he's keeping cool under the car. It's about 8 a.m. right now. Look at Splash. He's so cute. He loves this round cat bed. He sleeps there almost every night. He doesn't like getting out of it in the morning because he's so comfortable. See how the sides of the cat bed turn into pillows? Good morning, Splash. I am here with Stella and the Scratchy Ramp. And it is mail time. The cat's got some mail. You want to open your mail, Stella? What's this? Looks like a card. Does it smell like a card? Stella says it's a card. This says from the cat. Isn't that cute, Stella? Kind of looks like you when you were a kitten. I've never seen you as a kitten before, but I bet you're a cute kitten. Oh, thank you very much. This says to the Lucky Ferals, hope your Easter is simply perfect. From Eileen, Stella Boo, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Ditto. Thank you so much, Eileen, for your continued support. All right, Stella doesn't want to help me, so I'm on my own here. Here's another card. Isn't that pretty with all the flowers in the vases of water? Well, thank you very much. To Stella Boo, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Ditto from Eileen. Thank you so much, Eileen. 
for your generous donations. And here's another card. Ooh, look at this. Look, it has two canaries on it. I had a canary when I was growing up. His name was Stanley. And this is thank you. Thank you, Eileen. It's very pretty inside the card also. Two Stella Boost Splashes of Hydrox and ditto from Eileen. And I'll put these donations aside for cat supplies the next time I go to Petco or PetSmart. Thank you very much. We hope you've been having a very wonderful month. And look at this one. Look, it looks like Boo. He's peeking out of the envelope. Isn't that cute? And this says, happy birthday on your birthday. And look at that, it looks like Boo. Isn't that cute? And look at the paw print on birthday. That's adorable. That is so adorable. And this says, happy birthday, kitties. It seems like we have our birthday at around the same time, April 30th. And this is from Joe, Enigma26A. And look at the black cats. See them? One's popping out from behind the cake, and one's under the table. And yes, you guys do have your birthday at around the same time. Simba and Splash were born sometime around the end of April or early May, so I've been celebrating them around April 30th. Uh, so thank you so much for this. And there was a very generous donation inside, so thank you so much, Joe. We hope you've been enjoying the videos, and thank you for supporting the channel. And Splash and Simba, thank you for remembering their birthdays. Here's another card. Look at this card, it's a monarch butterfly. It's very realistic. Thank you very much. It's to Lucky Feral, Stella Boo, Splash Simba Hydrox from Eileen. Thank you so much, Eileen, for your donations. And this card is from the Environmental Defense Fund. EDF's Monarch Habitat Exchange Program engages landowners in an incentive-based program that can quickly restore milkweed to a broad swath of American farmland, creating key corridors of breeding and feeding habitats along the monarch butterfly's great migration. That's really cool. Thank you so much, Eileen. And here's another card. Look, it's another butterfly. Monarch butterflies were my favorite butterflies when I was growing up. They're really cool. Two Lucky Ferals, Stella Boo, Splash Simba, Hydrox, and Ditto from Eileen. Thank you so much, Eileen, for your pretty cards and for all of the donations. And this one is from the Environmental Defense Fund also. Very cool. And here's another card, and look at the stickers. There's cat stickers, shiny cat stickers on the back. There's a cat and a fish on top, and you see... The tape with all the little paw prints. And there are two more cats. I think they have cat toys. Maybe they're all cat toys with the cats. That's really cute. Look at this card. It says brothers are a gift. Oh, thank you very much, Nicole. This is from Nicole LaRue and Show Show. It says... Uh, 2021, April 26th, five year birthday, Splash and Simba. Yes, yeah, Splash and Simba are five years old. That can't be exchanged or returned. Lucky me. Happy birthday. And look at Show Show. What a handsome cat, right? This says, how is the whole family, Lady LF, Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, and Hydrox, and Ditto? We are all doing well. How are you, Nicole and Show Show? I hope you guys are doing well. Here you can find a birthday gift to Splash and Simba that they can share with Stella and Boo and also with Hydrax and Ditto, maybe something they can eat. Yes, I will go get them something really good to eat. Shosho is doing fine right now, but he is so thin. I don't know if he will recover from his illness, chronic kidney failure. It is one day at a time. Here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, spring is there for sure. Good weather, sunshine, and hot days. We continue to watch your videos and I explain to Shosho what is going on with your beautiful cats. Well, thank you very much for this lovely card, Nicole. Um, I hope Shosho is doing well. Chronic kidney failure seems like it's an epidemic 
uh, among cats and uh, even dogs. I hope Show Show feels better and I hope Show Show is doing well and I hope you are doing well also. Thank you so much for thinking of Splash and Simba on their birthdays. Here's another card. And this is just a note. Isn't that pretty? With all the uh, wild berries, the strawberries, and the bird, and the greenery. Thank you very much for the donation. It says to say hello to the Lucky Feral Stella Boo, Splice Simba Hydrax, and Ditto. It's a really pretty card. And this is from Eileen. Thank you so much, Eileen. And there's one more card here. I should get my letter opener. That's what I should have. Okay, I got my letter opener. So much easier. <laughs> Isn't that pretty with a little baby deer? Looks like a watercolor. Thank you very much. May your season be filled with friendship, laughter, and happiness. To the Lucky Feral, Stella Boo, Splash, the Hydrax, Ditto from Eileen. Thank you so much, Eileen, for all of your donations. They will all be put aside for the cats and put to very good use. We hope you are having a wonderful springtime season. And here we have something from Amazon. An envelope or padded bubble envelope. Can I get it open with a letter opener? This says, happy springtime. I hope the cats enjoy from Rising Boo. And these are churu bites. Chicken recipe wraps, tuna recipe. That is really cool. I've never seen these before. I guess they are treats versus squeeze ups. I don't know. So I am going to uh, open this and find out if the cats like them. Look for a taste test and review video coming soon. Thank you so much, Rising Boo. It is 10.51 a.m. and Hydrax and Ditto are eating their second can of food. And it's so cute what goes on. So a little while ago, um, Hydrax was hanging out by the back door. I'm like, you want some food? So I put some food out for him. But then he went over to get Ditto, wherever Ditto stays on the other side of the fence or in the other yard or wherever. So then Ditto comes by. So I was like, all right, I'll give you the other half of the can. So I put the two plates out, half a can each. So then I um, filmed a mail time video. And then I looked at the back door and Hydrax is hanging out at the back door again. Usually he hangs out when he wants some food. So I was like, all right, you want some more food? So I went outside and I found the plates because they were kind of pushed over. And the minute Hydrax saw me uh, moving the plates, he ran to the fence to get Ditto. Then Ditto showed up and then the two of them uh, are eating food. But what was really interesting to me is as I was putting the food on the plates, Hydrox was not running away. Like he was pretty much rubbing up against my legs. He wasn't actively rubbing up against my legs like a cat will typically do. But like when I was standing there, I put my leg right next to him and he didn't run from it. So I was like, wow, that's, that's major progress for, for Hydrox. Once the weather starts warming up and I spend more time outside, uh, it'll be interesting to see what these cats do. Because when the weather warms up, they tend to not be around. So I'm just curious as to whether they will be around more. And if they will be around more, are they going to be more open to interactions? Because they really hang around mostly when the weather's cold. Um, especially in the winter when it's really bad weather and snowing. Um, but now the weather's warming up really nicely. It's still been cold the past few nights. Like this past week, it got down to near freezing. Um, it was in the 30s and 40s, which is why they've been hanging around. But usually by this time, they're really not spending much time around here. So um, it'll just be interesting to see, to see what happens. Look at what Boo got from Grandpa. He got an arch. Grandpa put the arch on a stable wood surface, but unfortunately, I think Boo's going to knock it over. Boo, you going to knock over your arch? Maybe it needs to be on a bigger piece of wood. But Boo, Boo put his foot on it, so he kind of knows how to keep it upright. 
You like your new arch, Boo? You like it? He says it's really nice. So Grandpa attached it very firmly to this piece of wood. This is Boo's other arch. These are the kind you buy and um, they just come right out and Boo has knocked this one out multiple times already. So I don't know if Boo's gonna be able to knock this one out. It is 10.42 a.m. and I am getting a late start today. Kind of slept in a little bit this morning. And I just opened the back door and Hydrox and Ditto have been hanging out here by the back door. And it looks like they bought me a birthday present. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. Look what they gave me. It's a mouse. It's a decapitated mouse. So there's its head and there's its body. And I get to clean it up. But that's the way Ditto and Hydrax have said happy birthday to me and to Simba and to Splash. And there's Ditto, he's very proud of himself. I think Ditto did this. Here's Hydrax. How you doing, Hydrax? So yesterday there was a little birthday celebration inside among humans, and I fed the cats on birthday plates. So that's how Ditto and Hydrax know that it's birthday. They ate dinner on birthday plates. It is 6.53 p.m. and I just gave Hydrax and Ditto some dinner. They're having a can of turkey. I think it's Thanksgiving Day dinner. I think that's the name of the food. Of course, they're sharing a plate again. They're looking very handsome today. They both look like they've been grooming themselves. And I'm now going to feed the inside cats. It is 8.09 p.m. And this is some baked fish. Uh, I baked this in the oven about an hour ago, and it's been cooling down. I don't know exactly what kind of fish it is. It was caught uh, off the coast of Long Island um, back in November, and it's been in my freezer for a while. And the cats haven't had some fresh fish in a while, so I baked it today, and it's nice and cool now, so I am going to start shredding this for the cats. And I'm gonna give some to Hydrox and Ditto and the inside cats, and that's what they're getting for dinner today. This is the fish that I just shredded for Hydrox and Ditto. And I put it on a large plate. It is super, super windy outside today. So I'm gonna anchor the plate under a heavy chair. And if they eat this, I'll give them more. And if they don't eat it, I'll give them some canned food. There's the plate of food and there's Hydrox and there's Ditto. I'm sorry for all the reflections on the glass, but I'm gonna finish shredding the fish for the inside cats, and then I'm gonna come back and see how much they ate. All the inside cats are getting a nice plate of shredded fish. This is their dinner today. Let's hope they like it. I think this is cod. I could be wrong, but um, it kind of felt like cod as I was shredding it up. Okay, everybody, there we go. There's your dinner. Move over, Stella, so Splash could eat his. Move over, Stella. Stella, move over to the next plate. Splash, you go around. Nope, he wants me to move it. There you go, Splash, you eat it there. Right now it's about midnight and the cats are trying this pet relief. Hemp oil, 3.30. Uh, this is a CBD oil for dogs and cats. It says organic, 
100 milligrams organic active CBD oil and this is a one ounce bottle so um, I gave the cats each four drops of this on part of a churu which is like a squeeze up so I split the churu four ways I put it on their little crunchy plates and then I put four drops of this on it and I'm just gonna see how they do with that so it's obviously midnight um, they're gonna be going to bed soon or I'm gonna be going to bed soon they usually go to bed around the same time and I gave it to them to help them relax and because grandma and grandpa are coming to visit tomorrow and I'm curious to see if it will make them more relaxed when grandma and grandpa come to visit so usually when grandma and grandpa come to visit um, boo is very social with them and the other cats run and hide and then Stella will come out after usually a few minutes maybe like a half hour and then if someone hears crunchies then Simba will come out uh, but Splash usually hides the whole time so I thought maybe I'll give them some CBD oil and I'll see if that can help relax them because it is really good for stress and in the past when Boo has been stressed out, um, like when I was traveling and stuff, I gave him some of this and it made a big difference. And also when he was having signs of a urinary tract infection, I gave him this also because he didn't really have a urinary tract infection. It was just um, like a psychological thing. That's what the vet had told me. So it seemed to work. And this is a new one. Uh, the one I was using previously was a different brand. Um, but that one was already several years old, so I said, let me get a new one. And I think I got this at Petco. Now here in the box, it says, use twice daily, adjusting amount as needed, split recommended daily usage between a.m. and p.m. Then for cats from 1 to 15 pounds, it's one full dropper per day. And they're saying to uh, administer that twice a day, so like half a dropper in the morning, half a dropper at night, but I'm doing way less than that right now. I, I only give them four drops and um, maybe tomorrow morning I'll give them another four drops, maybe a little bit more, um, just to see if I notice any kind of effect with them. It says for maximum absorption, administer on an empty stomach. Um, so yeah, the cats haven't eaten in quite a while. And then on this side, it says a mountain one full dropper. We have hemp oil extract, 11.2 milligrams, CBD, 3.3 milligrams, and then active ingredients, organic full spectrum hemp extract, including naturally occurring CBD, inactive ingredients, organic coconut oil. So here are the two bottles. The new bottle is on the left. The old bottle is on the right. Um, what I was using previously was Innovative CBD Pet Tincture Full Spectrum Hemp Oil. And the old one had pumpkin oil, oat oil, coconut oil, and then the hemp oil with it. And I know this one worked well with the cats, um, but again, this bottle is now several years old. I don't even know how many years old this is, so I thought I would get a new one. And um, yeah, we'll see how this one does. This one I had bought at, it was like a big uh, vegan expo uh, in New Jersey. It's been quite a few years. Here are the cats. They're all just hanging out in the living room right now. And if anyone has not taken CBD oil, um, there's nothing psychoactive in it. The cats are not going to get high from it. It's nothing like that. Um, it will just give them a mild relaxing feeling. Um, the best way that I could describe it is that like tension leaves your body. You can physically feel the tension leaving your body and it just really gives you a state of uh, relaxation but it doesn't affect the mind at least the CBD oil that I've taken in the past um, you know had no psychoactive effects it did not um, dull the senses or dull the mind but it just made your body feel really relaxed almost like you've just gotten a massage if you've ever gotten a really good massage 
you know, the very relaxed feeling that you'll have after it. That's the best way I could describe it. So I'm also curious to see if it will have an effect on Boo's itching. So a few weeks ago, I thought Boo's itching could be because of fleas, because I thought I saw uh, flea dirt where he was laying. And I've been keeping an eye on that, and I've been checking it, and it could still be fleas. I have not seen any fleas on him, though. I've been using the flea comb on him. There's been no fleas on him. Um, sometimes I do see things that I think are flea dirt, but when I do the test on them, you know, when I wet them to see if they uh, then uh, become bloody, they don't. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him. Um, I've been reading my cat book library with regards to, uh, like, over grooming and hair loss, and right now things are just pointing to psychological. So if it is a psychological thing, if it is related to stress, then I'm going to be really curious to see if the CBD oil would make a difference with him, because if it relaxes him enough that he's not uh, scratching and itching and over grooming, then that could be a good thing. If I have to give him a few drops a day, then, you know, I'll do that to stop uh, his itching. So that's what's going on here right now. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. Um, if the cats act differently um, when Grandma and Grandpa get here. And, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Good morning, Splash. Good morning, Boo. Who's looking out the window? It's supposed to be a nice day. It has been ridiculously windy uh, over the past 24 hours, especially overnight. So the wind's supposed to pass this morning, but it's still here. So hopefully it'll it'll pass soon. Good morning, Simba. Good morning, Stella. Boo loves this pom pom toy. He likes to get in a little playtime before breakfast. Look at, can you see Splash up there? Splash is watching. So Boo also does this new thing when it's time to eat. I feed the cats downstairs and Stella and Simba, are usually the first ones down. And Boo, he sits at the top of the stairs. The reason why he does that is because he's blocking Splash from coming downstairs. I don't know why he does that. It's like a passive aggressive move. Although maybe it's not that passive, but he just sits there because he knows Splash will not try to pass him. So Boo has a superiority complex. Boo thinks he is very much far superior to the other cats. And that can cause problems. Because, you know, Boo is an alpha. Boo's an alpha. And Stella's an alpha. And that causes problems between Boo and Stella. But then Boo likes to throw his power around with Splash and Simba too. Boo is eating his breakfast. For some reason, he insists on eating it upstairs. And all the cats got drops of CBD oil in their breakfast today. They got five drops, so we'll see if it affects their behavior uh, today. They were nice and calm this morning. They all had a normal morning. 
and they all got brushed this morning. They had a little bit of playtime before they ate, so we'll see if we notice a difference, and we'll see if we notice a difference with Boo uh, over grooming. It's 7 11 p.m. and I just looked outside and there's a tabby cat. I don't know if it's the same tabby that was coming around before, but Hydrox was hanging out by the back door. And I went downstairs and I came up expecting to give Hydrox some food, but I looked outside and I saw the tabby cat. It was just like staring at me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. There's been a lot of change on the patio today. We've been kind of rearranging some of the landscaping. Um, the rose bushes were moved over to a different part of the yard and um, one of the Rose of Sharon trees was moved over to a different part of the yard and it makes a lot more room for Hydrox and Ditto on the side of the house and it even makes room for a catio if I was to um, want to put one in. The reason why I haven't wanted to is because it would take away space from Hydrox and Ditto. Um, so there's still more thinking to do with that, um, but right now, um, there's a lot of planting that went on today and just rearranging, so I feel like the, uh, tabby cat was here to check it out, but I don't know if I've ever seen that tabby before. I went to the Christmas tree shop earlier today, and they had the paper platters that I've been looking for for Hydrox and Ditto. So I bought about five packs of platters and each pack is 20. So here's a hundred platters. And if they have a platter for breakfast and a platter for dinner, uh, this should last 50 days. So uh, almost two months or about a month and a half, uh, which is good. Each pack was $3.99. So this was about $20 worth of platters. I'm here with a package of Churu Bites. And here's Stella. Stella says she can't wait to try them. Hello, Stella. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. These are... This is a package of Churu Bites, chicken recipe, wraps, tuna recipe. It says it's a three pack, and the cat's got these as a gift from Rising Boo. And here's Simba, and Boo's here, and Splash is here, all the cats just showed up. Let's take a look at the ingredients for those who like to know that kind of thing. They are chicken, tuna, water, tapioca, egg white, sodium, cassinate, core gum, Natural chicken flavor, natural flavors, yeast extract, natural tuna flavor, vitamin E supplement, paprika, oleoresin for color, and green tea extract. Be nice, everybody. Look at Simba's face. Be nice, everybody. Boo, the cats don't trust you because you still attack them sometimes. Simba, don't provoke. Don't provoke. Okay, so let's open this up and let's see what these are like. So they come in a little package like a churu, which is kind of like a squeeze up. Let's see, are these, um, I'm, I'm curious to see if these are like a treat 
with the squeeze up inside. That's what I'm thinking they might be. The question is how many are in each um, little package? Oh look, there's quite a few. So this is what they look like. They actually look like little pieces of jerky. And here's Boo. <laughs> what you doing, Boo? You think you're going to like them? Okay, I gave a plate to each of the cats in there. We'll each get two. Come on, Splash. Okay, who's going to eat them? It's something new, so they might be hesitant to try them. Looks like Boo's going to give them a try. He's licking it. Can he bite it? Oh, okay. There he goes. Then he spit it out. Eat that, Simba. Eat it. It's a treat. It's a treat. You eat them. Simba usually likes everything. Here, Stella, eat them. It's a treat, Stella. You eat them. Splash, eat your treats. Boo. Eat these. Yeah. Let me put them up near your mouth. Here. All right. Boo has just walked away. Uh-oh. Simba has just walked away. Is Stella going to try them? Nope, Stella doesn't want to try them. Come on, you going to try your treats? Come on, guys, are you going to try your treats or not? Here, there's actually three more. One, two, three. They're all in the plates. You can eat them. You can eat them. Stella, you like them. Stella, you like them. Eat them. Eat your treats, Stella. They're churu bites. They're churu bites. They're chicken with tuna. You can eat them. Stella, don't you want to try the chicken and the tuna? Don't you want to try the chicken and the tuna bites? You can try them. You can have them. You guys want some crunchies with them? All right, I gave them each about a teaspoon of crunchies. And now they're eating their crunchies. The question is, will they eat the churu bites along with the crunchies? They're all eating their crunchies. We will be back to see what they did. Simma ate his. Simma just ate his churu bites. Look, he cleaned his whole plate. See, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta be a little bit sneaky with cats. Is Stella going to eat her churu bites, or is she just going to eat around them? And what's Boo doing? Oh, Stella had it in her mouth. Then she spit it out. Is she going to eat it? Stella left the three churu bites. Here's Splash. He's down to the two churu bites also. Cats are smart. Is he going to eat them? Maybe he'll try them. Simba tried them. But Simba kind of likes everything. Hello, Simba. And there's Boo's plate. He has two little crunchies left. And three churu bites. He got one of the crunchies. Is he going to get the other crunchy? Yep. He got the other crunchy. He left his three churu bites. Is he going to eat them? Maybe he'll eat them. He tried them before. He almost ate them. I 
They keep falling out of his mouth. Maybe it's because he's missing a few teeth in the front. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Maybe he'll like them once he tries them. Okay, so Simba liked them, Stella and Splash did not want to try them, and Boo tried them, but he's having a few difficulties eating them, but I think they're going to be good for him, uh, for his chewing, uh, if he does eat them. Stella said she enjoyed trying the new treats, and she's sorry she doesn't like them. All the cats say thank you, Rising Boo, for sending them the treats to try. Going to Cracker Barrel, old country store. package of Hydrox cookies. These are the cookies that Hydrox was named after. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. So in all the years that I've been making videos on this channel, I've never seen Hydrox cookies in any stores around here. Otherwise, I would have bought them and made a video about them. But last week I was traveling and happened to go into a Cracker Barrel and look around their gift shop and I found them in Cracker Barrel. So Cracker Barrel is now carrying Hydrox cookies. This was actually the last package of cookies that they had on their shelf. But when I got home, I checked, and yes, they are indeed carrying Hydrox cookies in all of their stores. What I did hear is that they are selling out really fast. So they get them in, and they tend to sell out pretty quickly. And Amazon is also selling Hydrox cookies, and it's the same situation there. The company that makes Hydrox can hardly keep them in stock on Amazon because the minute Amazon gets them in stock, they sell out really fast. So I was really happy to find these because I do get a lot of questions about Hydrox's name and why is he named Hydrox and what does it mean, and he's named after this cookie. So Hydrox cookies first made their appearance in 1908. That's when they were first sold in stores. And it wasn't until a few years later that Oreo cookies started to be sold. So Hydrox cookies are actually older than Oreo cookies. And a lot of people say, well, why don't you name him Oreo? And I say, I don't think Hydrox has the personality of an Oreo. He has the personality of a Hydrox. And plus, um, years ago, I did know a cat named Oreo. So I feel like, okay, that name's already been taken because in my mind, I associate a cat named Oreo with that cat. And Hydrox is just not an Oreo. He's a Hydrox. If you've watched any of the videos on this channel that he's in, you'll understand his personality is much more the personality of a Hydrox. He's more serious and reserved, and he's kind of like an elderly gentleman cat, even though we don't really know his, his age, but that's the kind of uh, personality that he gives off. So let's check out these cookies. They're made by Leaf. It says, made without trans fats or high fructose corn syrup, which is a big selling point in my mind. Proudly made in the USA using domestic and globally sourced ingredients. 
the same great taste you remember. America's original cream filled chocolate sandwich cookie. And it says per two cookies, you have 130 calories, 1.5 grams of saturated fat, 85 milligrams of sodium, and 12 grams of sugar made with real cane sugar and natural vanilla flavor. That's another selling point. We don't want anything artificial and we want it to be as least processed as possible. It also says now non-GMO, no artificial flavors or colors, and this is a 13 ounce package. And let's check out the story of the vanishing cookie. Hydrox, the original sandwich cookie, debuted in 1908 as the signature product of Sunshine Biscuits. The cookie ruled the category until 1912 when National Biscuit, later Nabisco, created Oreo to compete with Hydrox. Over the years, Hydrox was the staple item in kitchen cabinets across the U.S. Then, in 1999, Keebler bought Sunshine Biscuit, changed the name to Droxies, and made it sweeter. A short time later, the cookie left the market. In 2008, with great fanfare, Kellogg's, which now owned Keebler and Sunshine, brought Hydrox back to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the famous cookie, only to cease production after a few months on the market. A new start. In 2013, Leaf Brands decided to bring back the famous Hydrox cookie exactly as you remember it, with its original ingredients including real sugar and non-hydrogenated oils. We also focused on the original flavor, making them less sweet. The Leaf brand's mission is to bring back the experiences you loved as a kid. We took a long time to make sure each Hydrox sandwich cookie you eat is just like the last one you enjoyed 20 or even 30 years ago. We hope you enjoy them as much as we enjoyed bringing them back. Remember, there's only one original sandwich cookie and Hydrox is it. Then we have the nutrition information. Serving size is two cookies. Servings per container is 13. Calories per serving is 130. Total fat, six grams. Saturated fat, 1.5 grams. Trans fat, zero. Cholesterol, zero. Sodium, 85 milligrams. Total carbohydrate, 19 grams. Dietary fiber, less than one gram. Sugars, 12 grams. And protein, one gram. Now let's take a look at the ingredients. First ingredient is sugar. Then enriched flour, which is wheat flour, malted barley flour, niacin, reduced iron, thiamine, mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid. Then palm oil sunflower oil, cocoa alkalized, corn flour, corn starch, leavening, which is baking soda and monocalcium phosphate, salt, soy lecithin, natural vanilla flavors, and unsweetened chocolate. I like those ingredients in a cookie because there is no high fructose corn syrup and there's no hydrogenated oils. And other than the soy lecithin, there's no other soy. And the front of the package says everything is non-GMO. So that is always good. I also picked up a package of Oreo cookies so we can compare the Oreos to the Hydrox. Obviously the packaging for both of these cookies looks very similar. The packages are the same shape and pretty much the same size. And the colors on the packaging are pretty much identical. They both use the same color blues. The one minor difference is that the Oreo package is 14.3 ounces, while the Hydrox package is 13 ounces. The serving size for the Oreo is three cookies. It's 160 calories for three cookies. Serving size on Hydrox is two cookies. It's 130 calories for two cookies. If we do the math, that means one Hydrox cookie has 65 calories and one Oreo cookie has about 54 calories. So there's an 11 calorie difference between the cookies. So if we compare the nutritional facts, uh, we're gonna compare one serving. Uh, one serving of Hydrox, six grams of fat, Oreo, seven grams. Saturated fat in one serving of Hydrox, 1.5 grams. Saturated fat in the Oreos, two grams. Uh, it says zero trans fat for both of those, zero cholesterol for both of those. Uh, sodium in the Hydrox is 85 milligrams. Sodium in the Oreo is 135 milligrams. Total carbs in the Hydrox is 19 grams. Total carbs in Oreo is 25 grams. Uh, sugars in Hydrox is 12 grams. And sugars in Oreo is 
14 grams, includes 14 grams added sugars. Let's take a look at the ingredients. It's been a really long time since I've had an Oreo or I've purchased Oreos, and I'm actually noticing that they seem to have cleaned up their ingredients a little bit because I do remember hydrogenated oil being in Oreo cookies along with high fructose corn syrup. So the fact that I don't see any trans fats or hydrogenated oils is a good thing. The number one ingredient in the hydroxy sugar, uh, the number one ingredient in Oreo is unbleached enriched flour. The number two ingredient in hydrox is enriched flour and the number two ingredient in Oreo is sugar. The number three ingredient in the hydrox is palm oil. The number three ingredient in Oreo is palm and or canola oil. So canola oil raises some red flags with me. I do try to avoid anything with canola oil in it. Um, so that's like a red flag for the Oreos. So that win goes to Hydrox. The next ingredient in Hydrox is sunflower oil. And the next ingredient in Oreo is cocoa processed with alkali. The next ingredient in Hydrox is cocoa alkalized. And the next ingredient in the Oreo is high fructose corn syrup. So there's another ingredient that I try to avoid. So, so far there's two ingredients that I don't like in these Oreos. So that means Hydrox wins that one also. Then Hydrox has corn flour and the Oreo has leavening, which is baking soda and or calcium phosphate. Hydrox has corn starch and Oreo has salt. Hydrox has leavening, baking soda, monocalcium phosphate, and Oreo has soy lecithin. Hydrox has salt and Oreo has chocolate. Hydrox has soy lecithin. Oreo has artificial flavors and Hydrox has natural vanilla flavors and then unsweetened chocolate. So Hydrox has just one or two more ingredients than Oreo does. However, it is my opinion that the ingredients in Hydrox are better than the ingredients in Oreo because Oreo has artificial flavor, Hydrox has natural flavor, Oreo has canola oil listed in the ingredients, and Oreo also uses high fructose corn syrup where Hydrox uses sugar. And that is why sugar is the number one ingredient in Hydrox, and it's the number two ingredient in Oreo because Oreo has two types of sugar. They have sugar, the number two ingredient, then they also have high fructose corn syrup, which you need less of to make things just as sweet as sugars. So that's why the Oreos should be quite a bit sweeter than the Hydrox cookies. And that's why sugar is the number one ingredient in Hydrox and number two ingredient in Oreo because there's additional sugar in the high fructose corn syrup later down the list of ingredients. Okay, so let's open these up and let's look at the cookies themselves. Each package has 26 cookies in it. Here's what the cookies look like next to each other. Hydrox is on the left, Oreo is on the right. They're exactly the same size. The chocolate cookie portion of the Hydrox does appear to be darker and more chocolatey. And if we look at the cookies from the side, they appear to be the same size from the side also. And if we stack them on top of each other, it does look like the Hydrox cookie might have a little bit more filling than the Oreo does. So now I am going to do a taste test and taste an Oreo and taste a Hydrox. It's been so long since I've had either of these. So I'm gonna taste the Hydrox first. The chocolate cookie is very crunchy and it's not too sweet. Now I'm gonna taste the Oreo. It's weird, but the Oreo kind of dissolved in your mouth quicker than the Hydrox did. Like the Hydrox was more substantial. Flavor wise, they're also a bit different also. I'm gonna taste this one again. It's very chocolatey. It's like a classic, chocolate cookie flavor and the oreo is crumbling much more than the uh, than the hydrox is yeah the chocolate cookie on the hydrox is much more substantial than the chocolate cookie on the oreo the chocolate cookie on the oreo seems to be lighter and it just kind of dissolves in your mouth much faster so eating a hydrox is much more of a satisfying experience versus eating an oreo they both taste good, obviously. They're both very similar, obviously. But there are some differences, and the Oreo has a different mouthfeel. 
than the Hydrox does. I think the biggest difference is the cookie. I also think that the Hydrox is not as sweet as the Oreo. Yeah, the Hydrox cookie is a much firmer cookie. You have to like bite through it. And the Oreo cookie is softer than the Hydrox cookie. And as you're chewing it, it just tends to dissolve in your mouth. So it's not as satisfying as the Hydrox cookie for that reason, which could be good for Oreo because it probably makes people want to eat more Oreos in one sitting. But for people, for example, um, you're going to be consuming a lot more calories of Oreos to feel as satisfied as you do from consuming fewer Hydrox cookies. So I find that to be really interesting. So if I had to pick a favorite, it would definitely be the Hydrox cookie. I like the ingredients better. They're cleaner ingredients and they're much more satisfying to eat than an Oreo is. Two Hydrox cookies and I'd be really satisfied. Whereas with Oreo, I feel like you could eat like six, seven, eight, nine of those and not feel as satisfied. So that is my review of Hydrox cookies and my comparison with Oreo cookies. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope you now have a better understanding of why Hydrox was named Hydrox. And if you've never heard of the Hydrox cookies before and you've never tasted them, I would definitely say give them a try because they're really good. And if you have a Cracker Barrel near you, head over to their gift shop. They should have them in the section where they have like the candy and the food and the sodas. And you can also purchase them on Amazon. And I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye. This is a bag of the new natural dry cat food that is being sold at the Dollar Tree. So this is a 10 ounce bag and this was a dollar and the brand is Farmhouse Naturals. So in the past I've seen Farmhouse Naturals dog food in the Dollar Tree and I've bought it for the raccoons and the skunks and the possums and the wildlife in the yard and they seem to like it but I never saw the cat food there before until the other day and since I saw the cat food I said oh let's give this a try and let's see if the cats like it. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. So it says, finest quality pet food, specially crafted since 1960. This is deboned chicken and rice recipe, super premium food for cats. Real USA chicken is the number one ingredient. No corn, wheat, or soy, no artificial colors or flavors, no artificial preservatives, no byproduct meal with prebiotics and probiotics, and this is made in the USA. Let's take a look at the back of the bag. It says Farmhouse Naturals is a unique, delicious, and nutritious super premium pet food that is made in the USA. Our first ingredient is always real protein. We craft each batch from a buffet of the finest farm ingredients, plus we add prebiotics and probiotics to help support your pet's digestion. You can count on Farmhouse Naturals as the outstanding choice for all your feline friends. Then it says recommended adult daily feeding guide. So if a cat weighs five to 10 pounds, they say a third to half cup a day for inactive cats and five eighths to seven eighths cup for an active cat. And then if a cat weighs 10 to 15 pounds, uh, if they're inactive, it's a half to three fifths of a cup. And if they're active, seven eighths to one and a quarter cups per day. It tells you how to transition your cat, kittens, um, reproduction, fresh water. Always make sure your cats have fresh water. And it says feeding rates should be adjusted based upon breed type activity or environmental conditions. Protect the food from moisture, store in a cool, dry place. Close package tightly and store away from your cat. So then it has guaranteed analysis, crude protein minimum 32%, crude fat minimum 13%, crude fiber maximum 3%, moisture maximum 
and then it goes into various vitamins and minerals calorie content 366 calories per cup so then let's check out the ingredients the first three ingredients are chicken chicken meal and turkey meal so that's pretty good then it goes into whole ground brown rice so rice is a grain so this is not a grain free food but rice is not as bad as uh, GMO soy wheat or corn then there's peas oat groats chicken fat dried plain beet pulp natural chicken flavor fish meal dried egg product taurine calcium sulfate salt DL methionine dried kelp dried cranberries dried blueberries then it goes into vitamins and minerals and then the uh, probiotics the dried lactobacillus acidophilus fermentation product and the other fermentation products so this food has a lot of the ingredients that the more expensive dry cat food that you can buy at pet stores has but more importantly this does not have any unnamed meat byproducts and it does not have uh, any soy flour it does not have any corn it does not have any wheat so it does have um, some grains in it it has some brown rice and it has some oat groats um, and then there's some veggies in it there's some peas and there's some fruit in it but out of all of the dry cat foods being sold at the Dollar Tree this is by far the healthiest the other dry cat foods being sold there cannot compare to this food at all yesterday I was browsing through this book this is the cat owners home veterinary handbook it's a really uh, good reference book to have on hand and I was looking through the entire book but um, I also noticed something in this nutrition section. So in the nutrition section, they mention different cat food brands. They talk about popular brands, and then they talk about premium brands. And premium brands are pretty much what I feed uh, the cats. And it says, premium foods are available through veterinarians, specialty pet supply stores, feed stores, and online. In general, the ingredients used in these products are highly digestible and have good to excellent nutrient availability. In contrast to popular brands, premium foods are produced by using fixed formulas. The ingredients used do not fluctuate in response to availability or market price. Manufacturers of these foods validate their claims through AAFCO feeding studies. Because these products contain high quality food sources that are easily digested, smaller amounts can be fed. Therefore, even though they cost more, the cost per serving may be comparable to many popular brands. Popular brands being your typical supermarket brands of cat food. And I thought that was really interesting that they say you can actually feed your cat smaller amounts of the premium brands because they are more easily digested. And I had never heard that before. I had only ever read the serving sizes that are included on like the cans of cat food or listed on the back of a bag of wet food. Here in their section on commercial cat foods, they say that Commercial foods contain instructions on the label about how much to feed based on the weight of the cat. The manufacturer's recommended serving size is often greater than many cats require. Follow the directions at first, but monitor your cat's weight. Feed more if the cat starts to lose weight and less if she gains weight or leaves food in the dish. Each cat really needs a customized diet based on her size, health, age, and activity. And I thought that was really interesting also because I have noticed that if you read the serving size on canned cat food especially, it always seems to be an incredible amount of food that they suggest to feed your cat on a daily basis. And I've noticed that on the pouches of wet cat food. Um, but that's good to know that it is validated in a cat health book by vets that you really can't go by the suggested serving size on uh, the commercial food that you buy you really have to kind of go by uh, your cat size their health their age and their activity levels and of course anyone who posts cat videos on youtube knows that you get all kinds of comments about everything on a daily basis and because i do mention cat food in so many of the videos i get all kinds of comments 
Um, some people claim that I'm not feeding the cats enough and other people claim I'm feeding the cats way too much. And of course there's all different kinds of variables involved, especially when you have more than one cat. So I always find it interesting to uh, read books that are written by vets. So let's get back to these farmhouse naturals. Let's open up this bag. This is what the food looks like. It looks like the typical premium dry cat food. Usually the more popular brands make their dry cat food different colors and you never want a bunch of artificial colors and additives in your dry food if you can help it. And these are a bit bigger in size uh, than the dry cat food that the cats have been eating. They're larger than the blue wilderness or the blue buffalo and they're larger than the nature's variety and the whole earth farms. So let's see if the cats are going to like these. They should like them because the ingredients are so similar to the other foods that they've been eating. So let me go get the cats. Okay, so I'm here with Boo, Stella, and Simba, and they're gonna, they're gonna do a taste test on these crunchies. I don't know where Splash is. I'm gonna give them each a few crunchies. We'll see if they like them. So it looks like Boo likes them. He's already done. Simba's eating his, but he's thinking about it. Is Stella gonna eat hers? Boo inhaled his. It looks like Stella's taking her time. Simba might be cautious because Boo's staring at him. There you go, Simba, I moved it closer to you. Boo! You have your own, come here. Here you go, Simba. So we can see that Boo really likes them. He likes them enough that he will fight for them. Now Simba doesn't want to eat because he doesn't want to get smacked. And Boo keeps inhaling them. Boo didn't have much breakfast today. For some reason, he didn't like the breakfast, so. All right, guys, this, that's it. I would say these crunchies are definitely cat approved. Three out of three cats approve, and Boo, Boo super approves. Want some treats? Splash, you want some crunchies? Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Hello, Simba. It's about 6 p.m. right now. Simba's been luxuriating on the bed today. That's the best way I could describe it because he has been all stretched out. All stretched out with his belly in the air. And he's been having a really nice relaxing day. So all of the windows have been open today. It's about 80 degrees out right now. It's really nice. Today started um, cooler and gray and overcast but and then it got sunny and and then it got warmer and what happened was I was attempting to bake Simba and splash a birthday cake and uh, something in the oven was giving off smoke and it set off the smoke alarm. Now I never use my oven. I've probably used it like a handful of times since I've gotten it. Um, I got it in 2019. I literally have used it a handful of times. But I guess one of the times that I did use it something had leaked or gotten on the bottom of the oven and when I was trying to bake them their cake today 
whatever was on the bottom of the oven started smoking and then it set off the smoke alarm and it was it was just really bad so I had to open up all of the windows in the house and put all the fans on and draw everything out so that thing would shut up but um I'm gonna have to bake them a new cake because I also uh, decided I didn't like how it came out and I let them taste it and they really didn't like it either so maybe I'll make them another one but that's why all the windows in the house are open and it just happened to work out that the weather got nice also at the same time so right now they're getting brushed and here's Stella she's waiting her turn Simba says not so fast because I have to brush his tummy okay Simba I'll brush your tummy Stella's getting impatient. Okay, Stella. I'll brush you too. I'll brush your tummy too. You have a nice white belly. Look at Simba. All the cats love being brushed except for Splash. He just ran away. And now that it's shedding season, well, it's been shedding season for a while, so I have brushing the cats listed as a daily, a daily chore or a daily activity. I have like a checklist, you know, like water, litter, food, treats, brushing the cats, playing with the cats. All right, Stella, you look so pretty, Stella. Look who just joined us. He wants to be brushed too. The cats have not had their dinner yet. They will have it soon. After I brush them, then I'm going to do all the water bowls and the litter. And then I think then they'll be ready to eat. Boo says it's time for him. It's his turn. So what Boo does when I brush him is he usually wants to walk over to the arch so he can rub on the arch while I'm brushing him. See, this is where he wants to go. He wants to go to the arch. What are you doing, Boo? There's some packing paper on the floor that they enjoy. Stella followed us and she's scratching on the scratcher. Good girl, Stella, good girl. And Boo is grooming himself on the arch and here's Simba, Simba just showed up. Okay, Boo. Remember, it's always good to get to know your cats. Don't assume all cats are the same. They all have very distinct and unique personalities, and they all have very distinct and unique preferences when it comes to all different things. Okay, Bo. He knocked that arch out of the bottom of the base. This is the arch Grandpa made. It's sturdier. And Boo knows. Look, he knows how to stand on the bottom so he doesn't knock it over. Watch. See how he stands on the bottom of the base? He knows how to do that. So he really likes this one. From now on, that's what I'm going to do. So there's this arch which keeps coming out of the base. I might have Grandpa put that on a more secure base. And there's one downstairs that does the same thing. I might have him secure that also because Boo loves them. It is 7.55 p.m. And I just gave Hydrox and Ditto a platter of chicken. This is some boiled chicken that I made today. I made a big pot of chicken soup. Um, from two thighs and two drumsticks. They're actually pretty big chicken pieces though. And I gave Hydrex and Ditto one of the thighs and one of the drumsticks, but 
First I shred the chicken. I Obviously I take the chicken off of the bone and then I shred it up for them. And they They tend to really like this so hopefully they'll eat everything that's on the plate. This is like a treat for them. Yesterday I unplugged all of the winter bowls, so the two heated water bowls and the heated kitty cafe. I unplugged them and I washed them really well and then I put them away. The only things that are still plugged in are the heated pet mats. The one in uh, the shelter Hydrex has been hanging out in and then the one in the doghouse shelter. I could probably unplug that one since no one's really been hanging out in that shelter. Hydrox occasionally goes in the shelter under the house. Um, and I think the nights are still uh, getting into the low 50s, so he still might enjoy uh, the heated pet mat. But I'll be unplugging that soon. So for the most part, uh, everything outside has been gotten ready for summer. Um, when I put the heated water bowls away, I have some large stainless steel bowls that I put out. The one other thing I might do is get like a blue plastic storage tub and cut a hole in that and turn that into a water station. I've had that in the past and it's worked really well from keeping like leaves and debris out of the water bowls. And that works really well if I'm away uh, for a weekend or an overnight trip or something. Um, but it's also real easy just to empty the stainless steel bowl and refill it. It is 9.12 a.m. and I just opened the back door and Hydrox and Ditto were already waiting by the door. So I just gave them a platter with a can of food on it. This is a can of Performatrin turkey. I mixed in water because they like it that way. And I also added uh, an herbal multivitamin. And they're eating their food now. The inside cats had homemade raw food and I put the same herbal multivitamin. I forgot I had it. It's been in my fridge for probably like a month and I figured let me use it before it goes bad. This is the herbal tincture that I just gave them. It is NHV Multi Essentials Dietary Supplement. This is a 3.4 ounce bottle and I order these online. And here we have the ingredients. So it says the serving size is 25 drops, servings per container 100. I normally don't give the cats 25 drops. Like today, I probably put about 10 drops in the food that I split among the four cats. And I probably put 10 drops in the food split between Hydrox and Ditto. I mean, I could add more if I wanted to, but they haven't added in a while. So sometimes it's better to start smaller and then work your way up. The ingredients are alfalfa leaf, oat herb, dandelion root, kelp herb, parsley root, marshmallow root, chickweed herb, stinging nettle root, Asian ginseng root, yucca root, Oregon grape root. So these are all really healthy herbs. Alfalfa is an ingredient that I sometimes put in the homemade raw food that I make for the cats as well as kelp. Um, and I also put some stinging nettle in the food that I make for the cats. So um, some of the ingredients in here they are getting in the homemade raw food and then some of the other ingredients are just like overall tonics. It says shake well for dogs and cats twice daily follow weight chart below. So between 1 and 15 pounds it's 0.5 milliliters. It says refrigerate after opening. The shelf life after opening is six months refrigerated so I haven't had it six months yet. It's a pure herbal extract, no artificial colors or preservatives, and this is a product of Canada. So here's the dropper that is inside of it, and 0.5 milliliters is about half the dropper or a third of the dropper. Um, you can see right now there's just a little bit more than 0.5 milliliters worth of liquid in this dropper. So that would be a daily serving for one cat. It's about 1.30 p.m. right now, and I just looked out the window, and I saw that the neighbor next door has an exterminator visiting right now. I see the exterminator truck outside, and I hope 
ditto is not going to be adversely affected from whatever the exterminator is doing. I don't know if they sprayed. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. But I know that I have heard stories of issues uh, that pets have had um, after an exterminator has put down some kind of um, stuff to kill bugs or whatever. So uh, I know Ditto hangs out in their yard quite a bit. Right, Boo? So let's hope they're putting down something that is cat friendly and not something that is going to affect him in a bad way. Right, Boo? Boo had some coconut oil put on him this morning because Boo was scratching. He was scratching his back, so I put some coconut oil on it. Boo runs away from me when I put coconut oil on him. Right, Boo? But he's so soft. He is so soft. It's about 6 p.m. right now. I just got back from Petco. I bought the cat some cat grass because I haven't grown any in a while. I keep meaning to. I just haven't had a chance to. And while I was there, it looked fresh. So I just came home and I washed it. I actually uh, turn it sideways and I run water through it because I just don't trust it being in the store and, you know, people running their hands through it and stuff like that. Not that anyone did because it's over to the side, but I just feel like it's better to wash it. I mean, I wash fruits and vegetables when I get them home, right? So it's really the same thing. Um, so Stella ate a little bit, and Simba is now enjoying it. He's the one who really loves it the most. It's 9, 10 a.m. right now. Boo's finishing his breakfast here on the play rug in the living room. And there was a gathering of the cats. So there's a bird video on the television, which is what Stella is watching. And Simba just got a few crunchies because I had to bribe Boo with crunchies to eat his food. And then there's Splash. All the cats had their breakfast downstairs and Boo only takes a few bites downstairs and then he wants to eat upstairs. And this is what he does. He eats a little bit and then he wants me to put a few more crunchies on it. And that's what happens when Boo walks away from his food. Stella or Simba go up to it and they eat it. Stella, that's not yours. You had yours. Boo just walked away from his food again, and this is what goes on. See? They're all waiting for him to finish, so they're going to eat his food. It's 9.24 a.m. Good morning, ditto. And there's Hydrox, and it rained all night. Everything is soaked outside, and these cats look a little bit wet. I just gave them two scoops of homemade raw food with warm water mixed in and some herbs. So today when I was feeding Boo and Simba Splash and Stella were looking for some crunchies, I noticed that Splash rubs up against Stella the same way that Ditto rubs up against Hydrox. And we all know that Splash loves Stella. So that would mean that Ditto loves Hydrox. Maybe Hydrox is Ditto's parent. I mean, here we are saying that, oh, Ditto could be related to Boo, but chances are much better that Ditto's actually related to Hydrox. Ditto could be Hydrox's son. Whether Hydrox is male or female, Ditto could definitely be Hydrox's son, and I think chances are much better that Ditto is Hydrox's son than Boo's son because he looks so much like Hydrox. I mean, he's a spitting image of Hydrox. So that would make sense. Even though Ditto has the same exact meow as Boo and a very similar personality to Boo. So... You know, they are all from the same gene pool. They're all from the same group of ferals that have lived in the woods around here. 
It's about 3 p.m. and I'm just about to run out to the post office. Let me show you what's going on here. So here's Stella. She's relaxing on the bed. And here's Simba. He's relaxing on the bed. And Splash was up here in the penthouse growling at me. And that's why I got the camera because I wanted to show you. But he just jumped down and now he's under the bed. Simba, why does he do that? Stella, why does Splash act like that sometimes? He always does it like in the afternoon. You guys all just had a treat. All of the cats just had a treat a little while ago on their crunchy plates. They all split a squeeze up and they had a few crunchies on the squeeze up, like literally like 10. And that was their little afternoon snack and Splash was absolutely fine while they had that and then I guess he just doesn't like it when he's on top of the armoire and I walk uh, near him. I think he probably feels like he's trapped. Simba says yes, he feels like he's trapped and he doesn't like that feeling, right Simba? And he doesn't understand that he could jump off and fly onto the bed where you are, right? Yeah, he's never done that. You've done that and Stella's done that, but Splash has never done that. It's 3.40 p.m. I just got back and look who it is. Splash came out of hiding. He's on top of the bed now. How you doing, Splash? He says he's doing better because he doesn't feel like he's trapped in a corner. Okay, Splash. How you doing, Splashy? You're so cute. Splash, do you know how cute you are? Do you know? It's about 8.30 a.m. Good morning, Simba. Good morning, Stella. This is what's going on in the living room. Good morning, Boo. So last night I found a whole bunch of ants here. So Boo wanted to finish his dinner up here. And then I got involved in editing a video and I totally forgot to pick up his plate. And it's probably a good thing that I did because when I came back like a half hour later, I looked at the plate and, and had a whole bunch of ants on it. And there was also an active ant trail. So I was able to follow the ant trail to my front door. And this is where I followed it to. So this is the door. This is the trim. This is a hinge. And obviously there's a very, very tiny space between the door and the trim. And this is where the ants were coming in. The ants are so small and so tiny that they're literally just walking in and there's one there's one right there that I'm gonna have to squash but um, yeah they were just all just coming in right there and there's no way that I can seal that off because I need the door to open so I had to clean up what I could yesterday and then I sprayed this down with uh, like an ant spray and then on the other side of the door I put some ant bait so hopefully the ants will eat the ant bait take it back to the nest and uh, they'll all die off and there's like another ant down here now, possibly even two. So let me squash those also. It's 2 p.m. right now. It's been raining all day. And I've been working at my desk on my computer. So I thought we could take a break and see what the cats are up to. Here's Stella. Stella just woke up from a nap. She thinks I'm going to give them some treats right now because they've been having afternoon treats around 2 o'clock. And look at this, I can't even whisper. I can't even whisper because Boo heard me. He heard the word treats. He thinks they're gonna get some treats right now, right, Boo? Boo is sleeping in the cat tower by the window. How are you, Boo? And here's Simba. Simba's been sleeping on the bed, but he's awake also. You woke up, Simba? Hello, Stella. The windows open a little bit in this room it's kind of cold and damp today but it's not like super super cold i don't have any heat on in the house right now so it's not very cold it's just icky right stella it's icky it's an icky day let's see where splash is look i found splash hey splash Splash is in the penthouse. It's been one of his favorite places lately. 
How you doing, Splash? Hey, Splash. Want some treats? Splash, you want some crunchies? Thank you for watching this Lucky Earl's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.